Tissue culture allows you to create massive quantities of genetically identical plants from one very small piece of plant tissue or even a single cell. You can basically create infinite plants and keep cloning those over and over and over. You could create a million plants if you wanted to. The power is yours. So today I'm going to show you, friend, how to get started with tissue culture in your home for under $200. $198.72 to be exact. When I first came up with the idea for this video, I really wanted to get it under $100, but times are tough. So this video will be split into four YouTube-friendly parts. In part one, we'll discuss how to set up a home laboratory and build a still air box. In part two, we'll learn how to read a tissue culture protocol and also how to make tissue culture media by using your microwave. In part three, we'll collect our tissue sample and place it into tissue culture using sterile procedure and the still air box that we built in part one. And in part four, we will talk about how to care for your tissue culture plants and when to subculture them. Timestamps will be in the description below in case you want to skip around the video or come back and revisit a certain part. Everything that I used for this video will also be linked in the bar below. Some of them are affiliate links, but I would not recommend anything that I don't personally use in my own home laboratory setup. Please remember to like and subscribe. I make new tissue culture videos every week and it really helps my channel. If you watch my videos, then you are familiar with the laminar flow hood that is currently behind me. A laminar flow hood, also known as a laminar flow cabinet or a clean bench, is a piece of equipment that provides a sterile environment for working with plant tissue cultures. It basically uses a HEPA filter to remove airborne contaminants and it creates an undirectional flow of air that moves away from the user and towards the sterile work surface. While laminar flow hoods are essential for commercial tissue culture practices, there is a way to tissue culture plants at home without one, which I'm going to show you today. Big tissue culture doesn't want you to know this. Today we'll be building a still air box, which is a much cheaper alternative to using a laminar flow hood. So I went to Target to gather the materials. For the still air box, you want to purchase a large clear container with a locking lid. That's not my cart. The size doesn't really matter, but it does need to be large enough that you can stick both of your arms into it. To build the still air box, I flipped the box over and traced two circles that were, you know, about the size that my arms could fit through, and I used a box cutter to cut them out. I also tried using a soldering iron, but I didn't like the smell that it was giving off from the plastic, so I switched back to the box cutter to finish the job. If you're feeling particularly crafty, you can also build a very rudimentary laminar flow hood at home for much cheaper than it would cost to actually buy one. Here's a basic plan from the books Plants from Test Tubes, but more plans can also be found online. If you do build one, let me know. I would love to see a picture of it. I think that's so cool. In addition to the still air box, your home lab setup will also need bleach, dish soap, 70% ethanol alcohol, a few mason jars or glasses, a small kitchen scale, a pH meter, hydroponic pH up and down, a spray bottle, some glass jars with polypropylene lids or polypropylene deli containers, plastic gloves, forceps, sterile petri dishes, some milliliter droppers, scissors, the ingredients to make tissue culture media, which we will discuss in part two, and a plant. This is probably the right part of the video to tell you that I actually injured myself while filming this video. <laughs> While I was trying to attach a blade to a surgical scalpel, I couldn't get it attached with a pair of forceps, which is what you're supposed to use to attach it. So I picked it up with my bare hands and was trying to force the blade onto the handle of the scalpel, which sounds extremely stupid in retrospect. I ended up slicing the tendon of my right index finger, Ooh. so I decided in the future that I will never use a scalpel for tissue culture again. You'll see a lot of videos where people are using scalpels, but you can also use a pair of stainless steel scissors instead. So a protocol is basically a set of instructions for tissue culturing a certain plant. It'll tell you which plant growth regulators to use, 
how to make the media and what ingredients to mix in the media, when to subculture the plants, and also the light and temperature that you should be keeping the culture vessels at. If you buy books like these, there are always protocols in the back. Here is one protocol that has been used by myself many times for African violets and it works great. You can also find protocols online by going to Google Scholar and ResearchGate, which are basically search engines for research papers. To search for protocols on both those websites, I use the scientific Latin name of the plant as my first search term, and then as my second search term, I type in either tissue culture or micropropagation. The order of the search results is not great. You a lot of times have to go to like page four or five to finally find what you're looking for, so just be aware of that. Today we're going to tissue culture a philodendron mame. May may? Mamai? May may. I think it's mame by following this protocol for philodendrons. The first step is to make the tissue culture media by following the instructions that are outlined in the protocol. So before we get into that, there are four main components of tissue culture media, which is the gelatinous goo that you see in the tissue culture containers. Sometimes it's a liquid, but today we're going to be making solid media, which is the more common way to do tissue culture. The first ingredient is murashigi and scooge, which is almost always abbreviated to MS or MS basal medium. MS provides a nutrient supply for the plant, so it includes things like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that all plants need as well as different vitamins and micronutrients to support the plant's growth in vitro. Basically, MS is the foundational ingredient for tissue culture. The second ingredient is agar, which is the gelling agent that turns it from a liquid to a solid. Some people use gel and gum instead of agar, which works just as well, but I usually use a technical grade agar that I purchased from Plant Cell Technology. Ooh, my Jimmy John's is getting delivered. I might have to pause. We secured the bag. The third ingredient is sucrose, which is just basic white granulated kitchen sugar. And then the final ingredient is plant growth regulators, which are often abbreviated to PGRs. PGRs are hormones used to manipulate your plant's growth in different ways. There are a number of different types of PGRs that are used in tissue culture, but the most common are cytokinins and auxins. Cytokinins promote cell multiplication, so you want to use them more in the early stages of tissue culture when you're trying to get the plant to multiply really, really fast. And then auxins, which are the other type of PGR that are very commonly used in tissue culture, promote rooting, and you typically use more auxins towards the end of the process. Here is a list of the most commonly used cytokinins and auxins. Although we are just introducing an explant into tissue culture today, tissue culture is a process done over months and months where you subculture or take a plant out of the jar and move it to another jar with different quantities of hormones at different stages to be manipulating the plant's growth in different ways. Some plant growth regulators can be dangerous to use. There are certain plant growth regulators that I will not even keep in my house, including TDZ, which is known to be able to actually break the blood barrier just by touching it. These chemicals are causing rapid cell mutation and multiplication in plants, so we don't want to be touching them. They can be harmful to us, our pets, to the environment, so be very careful, always wear gloves while handling plant growth regulators and store them in a place that's separate from your food. I have a mini fridge in my office, which is where I keep all my plant growth regulators, but you can also get those little fridges meant for makeup that people keep in the bathroom, and that's a good size for the little containers of plant growth regulators. Now that I've scared you, let's get back to the protocol. <laughs> in this experiment, scientists tried three different types of X plants to see which part of the plant would result in the best multiplication. An X plant is the piece of plant tissue that gets placed into tissue culture. So in this experiment, they tested a leaf, they tested a petiole section, and they tested a node. And they determined that the nodal section of the philodendron produced the best multiplication. So in this experiment, we'll be using a node of our plant as the X plant. To induce new shoots to grow and the plants to multiply in tissue culture, scientists tested three different cytokinins. They tested kinetin, BA, and TDZ. They mentioned here that BA and kinetin were more effective than TDZ for shoot proliferation, which is what we're ultimately trying to induce during the multiplication phase of tissue culture. When we scroll down in the protocol, we find a table of the experiment's results. 
For philodendron imperial green, we can see that Kinetin actually had the highest growth and shoot percentage when compared to two other cytokinins, TDZ and BA. However, the growth that occurred when using BA resulted in a way higher quantity of shoots when compared to the number of shoots formed while using Kinetin. So we can see from this experiment that BA is the most effective cytokinin for philodendrons, or at least the three philodendrons that were tested in this experiment. However, BA and BAP are both dangerous to use, and I'm not going to be using them for this experiment just because I honestly don't recommend keeping them in your home at all. So because Kinetin worked, we're going to use Kinetin instead, even if it's a little bit slower and the multiplication is a little bit less. Obviously we're just growing these at home so we don't need to create 10,000 plants. Like where would you even put them? I think 10 or 20 is probably enough for most of us. Kinetin is considered safer than other plant growth regulators because it is a naturally occurring cytokinin. It's actually less likely to harm you or your pets or the environment. So today I'm going to make half a liter of tissue culture media. If you're planning to make a full liter, everything will just need to be multiplied by two. When you read a protocol, the instructions are always in terms of making a full liter. So if it says 30 grams of sucrose, that's assuming a full liter. So you would just divide that by two to make half a liter. Chad GPT is an excellent resource for stoichiometry calculations. It can easily convert weight by volume and molecular weight to other units of measurement. Trust me when I say a full liter is a lot of tissue culture <laughs> media. Um, a full liter is pretty much enough for 20 to 30 jars that are about this size. So I start by filling a container with 400 milliliters of distilled water. I don't know why I said that like that. Although we're making 500 milliliters of media, we're going to be adding some things. So at the end, we'll top off the container with more distilled water to get to our half liter mark but we don't wanna start with half a liter and then be adding things beyond our half liter. So the protocol calls for seven grams of agar per liter. So I add 3.5 grams of agar. I purchased the small digital scale from Amazon for $10.80 as an alternative to the more expensive scale that I typically use. Um, in retrospect, I should have just bought the cheap one. Instead, it does the exact same thing and I feel silly. I also add 15 grams of sugar and 2.27 grams per liter of Murashigi and Scooge, which is sold as a powder. A lot of times the protocol won't give you the exact grams of MS that you need to add to the media. So in that case, just refer to what is printed on the bottle. I then add 0.25 milliliters of plant growth regulator, Kinetin, using a disposable pipette. If this is your first time doing tissue culture and you need to purchase MS and plant growth regulators, I highly recommend that you head over to Plant Cell Technology that is where I get the majority of my tissue culture supplies, and I do have a code with them for 10% off of your order if you use the code plants in jars. After everything is added, you can fill the container up to 500 milliliters with distilled water, then stir it up and test the pH of the media with a calibrated pH meter. If you don't wanna buy a pH meter, you can also get pH testing strips, but when I checked them both on Amazon, the meter was actually about the same price, so I opted for the meter instead. Per the protocol, the pH of the media needs to be 5.8. Typically, tissue culture protocols call for the media to be around a pH of between like 5.7 and 5.8. The pH is too low. The pH is always too low when you start. <laughs> So I use hydroponic up to adjust the pH of the media to 5.8. You just wanna add a few drops at a time and keep testing it so that you don't overshoot. So now the media is ready to be sterilized by using the microwave. I use about 50 milliliters of tissue culture media per container. So I have enough here to make about 10 containers of media. Before you pour from your big vessel into the individual containers, just stir it up really good. Um, so that the agar and the sucrose is more evenly distributed. In the laboratory, we would be heating up this mixture while we make it, so everything would combine very homogeneously. Um, but it's harder to get everything to combine when there's no heat element involved, so that's why we stir it up before actually pouring it. The containers that you use for the media are very important. You can use deli containers, but both the container and the lid have to be made of polypropylene to go into the microwave. It's very common for containers to be made of polypropylene, but not the lids, especially if they're just takeout containers that you've gotten from a restaurant or ordered from Amazon or whatnot. 
If you're not sure what the lid and the container are made of, you can check the recycling numbers. At least in the United States, if it says five, then it's made of polypropylene and can be microwaved. But if it said four, like these lids do in this instance, then the lid is not made of polypropylene and cannot be microwaved or used for tissue culture. I'm using glass jars with polypropylene lids which is what I use in the majority of my videos. I do have a 10 pack of containers linked below in the description if you wanna order containers online. So you're gonna place your containers or jars into the microwave with the lids just lightly resting on top. You don't wanna secure the containers while they are in the microwave. I microwaved five jars at a time and you want the liquid inside of the jars to boil for three minutes. So for my microwave, it took about four or four and a half minutes to get the liquid to actually be boiling for three minutes straight. Depending on the strength of your microwave and the brand of your microwave, this might be different for you. I've seen people say that it can take up to seven minutes in their microwave, so I guess mine is just stronger. After the time is up in the microwave, let everything sit in there for 15 or 20 minutes before you open it. It was boiling, so everything in there needs to cool off before you start handling it. When you're ready to open the microwave, put on plastic gloves and spray them with a 10% bleach solution and then carefully pick up the jars one by one and secure the lids and then place them somewhere where they can cool for a couple hours. Although microwaving media is the fastest and most convenient way to sterilize tissue culture media, it's really not optimal. You can still get contamination from using a microwave. The best way to sterilize tissue culture media is by autoclaving it in a pressure cooker at home. I have a video specifically on how to do this, but if it's your first time, then the microwave is absolutely fine to try out. So after the media cools for a few hours, it's ready to use. The best thing to do is to wait a few days and let the media sit out to make sure that no contaminants are growing in it. Okay, so now we are ready to tissue culture our plant, which is the fun part. So spray down your workspace with that 10% bleach solution that we sprayed our gloves with before. We are going to prepare the still air box by completely spraying it down inside and out with this 10% bleach solution. The environment is not technically sterile, but it is heavily disinfected to avoid contamination as much as possible. You'll also wanna make sure that your AC and heat are off or the vent is closed in the room that you are performing the tissue culture in. So place an unopened Petri dish and your media containers inside the still air box. The Petri dishes were purchased pre-sterilized. If you don't want to purchase disposable sterile Petri dishes, an alternative would be to use a clean ceramic or glass plate sprayed with 10% bleach. I spray the outside of the media containers with 10% bleach before placing them inside the box. I also add a small container with 10% bleach to place the pre-washed forceps and scissors into. Ideally, all of this equipment would be autoclaved prior to using it with a pressure cooker, but we're trying to simplify the process as much as possible. You'll also need a container of distilled water for rinsing explants before placing them into tissue culture media. So we're going to select the plant that we want to tissue culture. In this case, as I mentioned before, we're using a philodendron mame. According to the protocol, we want to use nodal sections as explants, so I cut a few different nodal sections to use, and I spray the scissors with 10% bleach in between making these cuts. Outside of the still air box, I rinse the explants under tap water for 15 minutes, and then I place the explants into 70% ethanol alcohol for one minute. Then it gets rinsed in water and transferred into a solution containing 2% bleach and 98% distilled water. We just want to agitate that solution by hand like this. After 20 minutes of agitating the explant in the bleach solution, spray the outside of the vessel with 10% bleach and place it into the still air box. You wanna let everything sit after spraying it down with bleach for 15 to 20 minutes before you begin working in the actual still air box. So now we are ready to do the transfer. This was the part in filming where I cut my hand and then went to the hospital for three days. Oh my god. So as I mentioned before, we're using scissors and not a surgical blade. 
And I also had my lovely fiance, Robert, help me film this portion of the video. I'm giving him instructions as he does tissue culture for the first time. He's never done it before. I don't think he's ever seen me do it before, so he was truly a newbie. I'm just gonna let this part of the video play while I give him instructions on how to do tissue culture. Yes, right away. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to open the jar that contains the explants that says 2% bleach. And we're gonna use the forceps to take each of the explants or those pieces of plant tissue out of the jar and open the Petri dish and place them onto the open sterile Petri dish. Uh, that's okay to stack them like that, I guess. I've never seen it done, but that works. Yep, and then you're just... <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. You're just gonna dip them into the water before placing them onto the Petri dish. And this just rinses off the residual bleach and dish soap that's left on there from when we decontaminated them. It can be hard to see through the, the box. If you guys are having trouble seeing into the still air box, you can also put a phone with a flashlight on top of it um, just to see in there. Okay, and then place the water off to the side and then put your forceps back into the 10% bleach mixture. And then in your non-dominant hand, you're going to pick up the forceps and in your dominant hand, you're going to pick up the scissors. And then you're going to cut about five millimeters off of each side of each explant. A little less than that. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And then do each side of each explant. So. Perfect. The ends don't matter, they can go on the table because they don't have to be sterile. Yeah, you can just chuck them. And then before you do the next one, dip both your tools back into the 10% bleach, just to try to keep this as sterile as possible. Perfect. And then do the exact same thing to the other explant. And guys, we're just doing this because the tissue on the end is gonna die since it's been in bleach, and we just wanna avoid putting the dead tissue into tissue culture. It can be tricky. The scissors aren't super sharp. That's why I was using the um, surgical blade. <laughs> okay, and then put both your tools back into the bleach. And just be careful. Like I said, guys, earlier, you just want to avoid putting your hands over top of the Petri dish as much as possible so that you don't get any dead skin or germs or, you know, anything falling onto the Petri dish since it was gamma radiated prior to the experiment. Not by us, but we bought them pre-sterilized. Um, so you're going to pick up one of the jars of media on the on your left, perfect, open it up, and then ideally you want to hold the lid while you do this, but it might not be possible. You can just put the lid face up on the... Try to hold it in the sand and do this on the... Yeah, that works, but just avoid reaching over it. Like, move it somewhere where you won't reach over it. The media. Yep. I do need to be able to see it. Can you put it, like, closer to me? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And then you're just going to use the forceps and pick up the tissue and then push it into the tissue culture media a little just bit. One. Uh, yeah, just one of them. We're going to do one per jar. Uh, not on its side, though. You want it facing right side up. So the way that we took the cutting. It's going to be hard for you to see, but... Perfect. Right side up, just push. It should have good contact with the media, but it shouldn't be fully submerged in the media. That looks perfect, actually. You want to avoid <laughs> touching the media that much? That's okay. Yep, put the jar right back on and put the forceps back in the bleach. And then seal up the jar and place it off to the side. Okay, and then we're just going to do the same exact thing for the second one. So open it up. And you can put the lid down if you want, right side up. Like this? Yep. Yeah, somewhere where you won't put your hands over it. Okay, and then the same exact thing, just take the forceps and push the explant into the media slightly. It's tough. 
Yeah, it's hard inside the airbox. You can pick it up though. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Awesome. So then close it up. Awesome. And that's it. Thank you, Robert. You look like a hostage. I'm not holding him against his will, and he was voluntarily here. <laughs> These containers will get placed under grow lights that give off between 150 and 200 foot candles of light for 16 hours a day. If you don't have plant lights, placing them in a window that gets a lot of indirect sunlight will also work. Although it's not really necessary, I would recommend that anyone who has a lot of plants get a light meter. This is the one that I have from Amazon. I'll link this below as well. It basically just gives you light readings. So many people say they struggle with houseplants. All my coworkers or my old coworkers used to be like, I'm so bad at plants. I don't understand plants. Like I just don't have a green thumb. Plants are science. If you follow instructions correctly, you won't kill a plant and you can care for any plant in the entire world, basically. And one of those tools that's really helpful is a light meter to make sure that your plants are getting the correct quantities of light. Anyway, in the next few weeks, shoots will begin to form inside of the tissue culture containers. Once we have a good amount of baby plants, we'll need to transfer the babies to rooting media. As I mentioned earlier, rooting media usually contains more auxins than cytokinins. This protocol calls for an auxin called IBA to be used to assist the plants with rooting. At this point, you would need to create a new tissue culture media following the same process that we followed earlier in this video, but using 0.5 milligrams per liter of IBA instead of 0.5 milligrams per liter of kinetin. Hopefully this video is useful to you guys. If you have any questions or if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. If you're brand new to tissue culture, I recommend checking out the other tissue culture videos on my YouTube channel, as well as buying the book Plants from Test Tubes, which is basically an introduction to plant tissue culture that I found really helpful a few months ago when I was first getting started. Let me know in the comments what plant you plan to tissue culture first. I would love to know and let me know how it goes. Thank you so much and happy tissue culturing. <laughs> Bye.